So we need to know how to put outlines around type and to do it the right way. There are a multitude of wrong ways of doing it and some bad effects and really bad effects that are put out there. Um, but, uh, but let's do it the right way. So let's select our type. And you can see that this is actual type. It hasn't been converted to shapes or outlines or anything yet. It's just regular type right now. And if I were to select that type and to put a stroke on it, let's say we put an orange stroke around it, and let's thicken that stroke up so you can really see it. What happens here, you don't really see it when you have about four-point type. You just go, hey, I've got a stroke around my type. That's what I wanted. But really, that's not what you want. Okay, because what's happening here is it's closing in some strokes, it's closing in some hairline strokes, leaving the, 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 uh, the stem strokes a little bit thicker. But if you look right in there, see how thin that gets? It makes it a little bit more difficult to read. It's kind of annoying on the viewer's eye. So what do you want to do? You kind of want to make it thicker. A lot of times people want to make it thicker, but what happens when you go to 10 or 12 or 15 point or something like that? So we go to 14 point, you can see the parts begin to, to disappear on us. So people go, well, gosh, I really would love for it to be nice and thick like that, but it's just, it's not legible enough. So they go down to 10 or so where you can really see the black, but then it gets, begins to disappear. And so you, you end up kind of juggling these ugly kind of things around. And there's no real way to change that while this is type. So what you really have to do here is select the type, go up to type, and down to create outlines and turn it into shapes. Now, you can't edit it as text anymore. In other words, if you've settled on this typeface, you're not gonna be able to change it to a different typeface at this point, okay? This type up here, we can change to a different typeface. We can select it and we can go down to our type menu and change that type to something else if we really want to. Um, let's put in, I don't know, marker felt. Okay? And so we can see how that comes about. It actually changes the typeface. We can't do that with this anymore because it's no longer type. We can change that to whatever typeface we want, and it's not going to change anything because these are shapes now. They've been converted to outlines or shapes. So how do we deal with this? Well, what we do is we select it. We go over to our Appearances palette here. And this really gives us a lot of options here. This is all grouped together. We can ungroup it, or we can simply double-click into it and get inside of that group. Okay, that's really what I want to do. And I'm going to take this and convert the stroke on this shape. Let me select all of these shapes. Convert the stroke to this orange. And I'm going to put that 10-point stroke or whatever that we had on there before. And you can still see the same thing begins to happen. It begins to disappear on us. Let's go thicker. Let's go with like a 14-point stroke even. Something really big. And you can see how this begins to degrade on us. But the difference is this time we've converted it to shapes. So I can go over to my Appearances palette. I'm in this group, I'm gonna double click in the contents of the group, and I'm gonna take the stroke and put it behind or beneath the fill. Now I've got the fill. So I've got the full scale, the full effect of the stroke that I originally had. And in fact, what's really cool here is no matter how large I make that point weight, it doesn't actually impede that stroke. Now you'll see some overlapping, so the F overlaps the Y. That, that actually happens because because we've got uh, this letter came or was typed in after this letter form, we can change all that. We can go deeper and further into this, okay? We've got a lot more options here. In fact, we can go in and even include another stroke on here if we want to. If we just, while this stroke is selected in that blue, we can come down here and click new or duplicate item right there, and it duplicates a stroke. So let's go ahead and put another stroke on there. Let's make it a, uh, a red stroke, and let's make it instead of 40 points, let's make it something like, uh, seven points or something like that. Boom. And so now what we have here, you can see we've got a little thin red stroke and an orange stroke all attached to this black fill. Now the black fill is on top of everything else, right? So the black fill is really, the, the, the uh, structure of the letter form is really not being diminished at all. That shape isn't being diminished in the least. So we've got, we've still got several really cool options of things we can do. I'm going to select this. Um, I'm going to select all of these uh, letter forms. I'm just going to go up to object and then path outline stroke. And it looks like things just went nuts and haywire here, but they didn't really go all that haywire. We still have, have some pretty good options here. I'm going to select off of that. I'm going to get A, which is my direct selection tool here. I can see the letter form here. I can even grab other little pieces in here. What you can see is that I've actually uh, I've actually got a, an outline of this red stroke. If I were to grab that red stroke, you'd really be able to see that that, uh, that I'm moving that that uh, the black and the orange remain together as one stroke, and the red stroke became this separate entity. And it's actually a shape with a clear a uh, clear um, interior shape, really, or or a, uh, something that's actually been affected uh, as though it were a pathfinder object or something. You've actually got two two objects here, one sort of cut out of the other. Um, I'm going to press Command Z to undo that. Now I can still take these objects here, these black objects that I've got here, 
that look like letter forms, right? Select all of these. And again, go up and do object, path, outline stroke. And this looks like, I got, like I've got this orange fill in here, but I really don't. It's, it's really not as bad as you might think. It's not quite as crazy as you might think. I'm going to hold down shift and select these big orange shapes, okay? Select all of those big orange shapes. And I'm going to go over to, to my Pathfinder palette, which is right here, and merge all of those into these into one shape. And that looks really crazy, I know, but don't fret over it. I can always go, go to this and change this around some. I'm going to select out of this. Select this object and go Object Arrange, send it back, which also has a key command. And it went, it went as far back as it could go. But I'm going to take this one little object here. I'm going to go over to my Layers palette right here. I'm going to grab this one little object. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to make a new layer. Take that, la call it Layer 2. Move it all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm going to pull the selected object, which is marked by this blue. Pull that selected object down into layer two there. And you'll see everything else pops forward there. It actually sits in this layer one. I moved the big orange shape back to, to, uh, to layer two and I can hide that if I like or show it. I'm gonna show it for now, but this is a whole separate shape now. You'll notice there's not any of that overlapping of the orange onto that shape at all now. I can even come up here. I can ungroup these objects if I want. I've got the black and the red sort of all grouped together. These are all groups. Um, I can ungroup those objects and again change the order. But right now I've got a lot more options. This is actually looking a lot better than it would have otherwise. I'm going to take this object and uh, let me double click into that. So I've got in the group. Let me, uh, and I'm actually let's see, double click into it. And I should be able to pull that object in front. Let's go object, arrange, bring to front. And the little red shape is actually in front there. So if we come in here and select this, we go over to the group, we can look inside of this, what's selected here, and look inside of that by twirling these down. And we can see where this object is. If I actually want to simply move that whole group right there in front of everything else, I can do that. And that puts the black shape in front, which is really what I'm looking for at this point. And I can do that with all of these objects as well. Just twirl them down. And again, make sure that I've got the black in front of the red, just like that. I can do that in my appearances palette as well. Let's move the black in front of the red. And you can see how easy that is to do. There's no rocket science here. Easy as pie, right? So we select off of that, and we've got the object exactly how we want it to look. No real overlapping, no thinning of the strokes. This is really looking more along the lines of how I would like for it to look. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know if it is or not.